Hey everyone, welcome to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be talking about SCSS and SAS and implementing it in our code base. So let's get sassy. Well, Elliot, why would we use SAS or any other CSS preprocessor? Well, Austin, it's easy to use, it decreases the repetitiveness of your code, and it gives you some amazing advanced features. Awesome. I also know that it is easy to maintain and there's nice features such as variables, which help us store colors or any other CSS values in them. So let's talk a little more about SCSS. What is SCSS? So SCSS is a superset of CSS, which means that you can use all of the same syntax of CSS in SCSS. But unfortunately, browsers can't understand SCSS. So we have to compile it down to regular CSS. To do this, we're going to use a CSS precompiler. Um, our IDE will take care of it for us by watching the files for changes. So we're going to show you how to compile your SCSS down to CSS later in the tutorial. So let's cover some of the important features of SCSS, one being nesting. As you can see here in our VS Code window, we have a div identifier, and then inside the curly braces, we have a span and a link uh, identifier. You obviously can't do this in CSS, and this kind of follows the same structure of our HTML. As you can see below, there's a little bit of kind of mock HTML. We have a div, and then inside the div, we have a span and a, a link tag. So it just kind of makes it nice and clean and elegant when you have a certain HTML structure you want to follow. So next are mixins. Mixins are groups of CSS declarations that you can use throughout the rest of your code so that you don't have to repeat yourself. So here in our VS Code window, we've declared a mixin called SBD button, and it's got all of these properties predefined here. Now anywhere we use the code at include SBD button, it will automatically apply all of these CSS properties to whatever element the edit button class is on. So another useful feature in SCSS is inheritance. Uh, inheritance lets us share CSS properties from one selector to another. So here in our VS Code window, we have a notification selector with a color. Um, and then in our message selector, we have add extend, and then we're calling that notification selector. Um, this is another way in SCSS to keep our um, SCSS not repetitive, really. Um, it's kind of similar to our mixins, but it's a little bit different. Okay, so next up are operators, and these are just math operations that you can do in SCSS. Um, unfortunately, you can't do them in regular CSS, so it's just your multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Um, this lets you do some really cool things like setting up a sticky header, so you can make a header of a certain height and then subtract that height from the rest of your content on the page. The last feature that we're going to cover is pre-built functions. Pre-built functions are just handy functions that will help us style our SCSS and we don't have to write all the custom um, CSS ourselves. So as you can see here in our VS Code window, we're using the RGB pre-built function and we will provide a link to a list of pre-built functions in the description down below. So check those out. So earlier in this video, we mentioned both SCSS and SAS, but what's the difference? Well, it turns out the only difference is syntax. SCSS relies on curly brackets like regular CSS, but SAS uses indentations instead. You can see in our screen share that we have two coding examples. The top one is SCSS, and it has curly brackets to differentiate between its CSS selectors, while the bottom one has the same CSS selectors but uses indentations instead for its syntax. So although there are two different syntaxes for SCSS SAS, um, there are command line tools that we can use to convert between the two. And also our pre-built functions work with both. So um, there's really nothing that needs to be done there as well. So let's talk a little bit real quick about installing SCSS into our Angular application. It's actually really simple when you actually create a new Angular project. The Angular CLI tool will actually ask which CSS preprocessor you would like to choose. So you can choose SCSS or SAS, but yeah, that's how you do it. Is it really that easy? Not always. Right. In an existing project, it's a little bit more tedious, but we'll provide a link in the description to walk you through that. So let's go ahead and get started with a tutorial demo. Um, we have gone ahead and already set up a bare bones kind of template of a blog. 
We're going to be using this blog to demonstrate the SCSS concepts we've talked about today. And also, kind of on a side note, we're going to be using this blog to really demonstrate a lot of different topics that we're going to be talking about in future videos. We will be pushing all our code up to GitHub, so if you want to follow along, you can definitely do so. Yeah, so just to get a quick overview of the blog template that we have right now, um, you can see it on the left here, it's very basic. There's no styling except for a few uh, centered text and centered elements. Uh, but more importantly, we have three components inside our Angular application, um, and we're just gonna be focusing on the homepage for this tutorial. So we're gonna be using the homepage HTML, the homepage CSS, and you can see we've already got some basic HTML as well as JavaScript in here. That just gives us some uh, dummy data to show in our uh, styling tutorial. And as you can see, WebStorm is already asking if I want to enable a file watcher to compile our SCSS into CSS. Uh, this is really helpful, so we're gonna set this up real quick. It will be different if you're using a different IDE, but all IDEs have this capability. So I just clicked on the file watcher link at the top, but you can just go through the normal settings if you want to as well. Um, and you can see here on the left, we're in the tools tab. Uh, we're gonna click on file watchers and we're gonna go ahead and add a new one. And you can see there's a template for SCSS, so it makes it really easy to set up. The only thing we have to do is change where the program is located. And for this, we're gonna be looking for a sas.cmd file in our node modules folder. Okay, so you can see we found the sas.cmd file in our node modules folder. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. And that's it, our file watcher is set up. So we're gonna hit okay and okay again. And now our file watcher is running. So any changes we make to any SCSS file, WebStorm is going to automatically pre-compile that into CSS. And those changes will be reflected in our local host server. So we have gone ahead and created a quick mockup in Adobe XD just to kind of have a plan for what we plan to accomplish on our homepage. Um, so if everything goes right, it should look somewhat similar to this mockup. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is updating the uh, blog to have the banner header, as you can see here in our Adobe XD uh, mockup. So we're gonna go ahead and get started coding that. Okay, so you can see here we've got our header updated. Uh, looks pretty good, so we're gonna keep going. So we've gone ahead and already created a mixins and a variables partial file. Um, in the mixins, we'll add some mixins, um, and then in the variables, we'll have our colors. Um, you can see here that we have created a SBD button mixin just so we can have some kind of uh, consistent formatting to our buttons throughout our web page. Um, in the variables here, you can see there's a ton of uh, color variables there. We got all these from tailwindcss.com, which is where you can go to get a bunch of different color palettes. Um, so check it out, we'll leave a link in the description. Uh, so yeah, so the next thing we're gonna do here is uh, add some CSS CSS to the new post button. So here you can see we're changing our button into a div and the reason we're doing this is because divs are usually easier to style than buttons. Uh, the default button styling has kind of a 3D texture that comes with it that's just not very fun to deal with when styling. So we're just going to bypass it and use a div instead and as you saw we can still use the click property to trigger events whenever that div is clicked.
So we actually need to use our mixins and our variables in this SCSS um, file. So we're, this is how you import them. We just point directly to them in the file path. Okay, so we just added um, some C SCSS to our new button. Um, as you can see here, we do use a mixin, the SBD button, and we also do use a, um, we extend uh, our center text, which is in our styles SCSS right here. Um, so that is using inheritance as we went over earlier. Um, so it's looking okay so far, and we let's dive into the next stuff. All right, so next up, we're going to update the styling for our blog posts. So that includes adding some uh, margins and paddings around the left and the right side, as well as updating the read and edit buttons so they look a little bit nicer. So here we go. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for our styling of the home page. Uh, I think it looks pretty good so far. We didn't end up adding the images for now just to keep it very simple. We'll probably end up adding those eventually, but just for now, didn't wanna make it too complex. So we didn't add those. So today we covered a bunch of stuff about SCSS. We hope you learned a little bit. Um, and we also got to see some real, um, a real implementation of the SCSS in our blog app. So we hope you join us while we continue to develop this blog app and hopefully you learn some stuff while we're applying some real actual concepts for web development to this blog. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to crush that like button and hit subscribe. Thanks guys.